Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is my Edexcel IGCSE exam series two, and this is number 41, proof. Right, let's get it. Okay, so the first thing we've got to know, very important, is how to define an even number and how to define an odd number. So an even number we define as two multiplied by n, where n is an integer or a natural number, and we can notate it like this. Don't worry, you don't really need to know that notation. But what you do need to know is that we can write it as 2n. Odd number is 2 times a natural number plus 1, uh, and where n is, again, a natural number. OK, so if we keep that in our mind, that whenever we see the word even, we need to write it as 2 times a number, so 2n, and odd, 2 times a number plus 1. And then what we have to do is we have to really read the question and read every aspect of it, literally word for word. Product means multiply. And then this is which catches a lot of people out. It says any two odd numbers, any two odd numbers. Well, the first one we're going to use is 2n plus 1, as that is what we defined as an odd number. And then a lot of people then make the mistake by writing 2n plus 3 as another odd number. Well, yes, it is another odd number, but it's specifically the next odd number along. And this says any two odd numbers. It doesn't say two consecutive numbers. So we can't use that. Instead, we have to use another odd number, which we can define as 2m plus 1, or any other letter you like. OK, now what we can do is we can multiply these together. So doing the brackets, we're going to get 2n times 2m, which is 2nm. And then we're going to get 2n times 1, which is 2n, 1 times 2m, and we're going to get 1 times 1 is 1. OK, now we need to make this look like an odd number, because it says here that we want it to be always an odd number. So how can we make it look like an odd number? Well, what we can do is we can take out a factor of 2 from the first three terms, like this. And then I've written this as 2 times, and all of these things in here will be an integer, like a, a natural number, a whole number, because we know that we've decided that n and m are whole numbers. So this is 2 times a whole number plus 1, therefore it is odd. So we can say, therefore, always odd. Beautiful. Okay, next one. Uh, and what we're going to do, again, is we're going to read it really carefully. Prove that given any three consecutive whole numbers. Okay. So consecutive numbers means one after the other. Now the numbers I'm going to pick are n, n plus 1. I'm also going to pick n minus 1. Controversial, I know. I could have done n, n plus 1, n plus 2. But I know from experience that when you use n minus 1, n and n plus 1, it tends just to cancel out a bit neater and a bit less work, really. Given any three consecutive whole numbers, the sum of the square of the smallest number and the square of the largest number. OK, so let's do that first then. So let's find the sum of the squares of the smallest and the sum of the and the largest number. OK, so we can do that. So we could do n minus 1 squared plus, because it says sum, which means to add, n plus 1 squared. Uh, let's multiply out these brackets. Uh, I'm going to do it quickly. I'm sure we all know how to multiply out double brackets. You know, n minus 1, n minus 1, all that jazz. That will give me two, minus 2n two plus 1. And again, how would I multiply out n plus 1 squared? Well, I would do this. I would do n squared, an n, another n, and, and a plus 1. So that becomes n squared plus 2n plus 1. OK, let's collect this up. We've got two lots of n squared there and there. So 2n squared. We have a minus 2n and a plus 2n, which cancel very nice, nice and neat. And we've got a 1 and a 1 make 2. OK, great. 
So that is the, the yellow part. And then it says it's always two more than twice the square of the middle number. Okay, well what we need to do then is twice the square of the middle number. So over here, I will do n is the middle number squared times two. So there it is, times two. And obviously that equals two n squared. Okay, and then we need a statement. We've done all the algebra. It's clear to see what we've done. Now we just need a statement. So we could say that over here, two n squared plus two is two more than 2n squared, full stop. And there we go, we're done. Okay, uh, questions, this next question says, using algebra, prove that given any free consecutive even numbers. Okay, so again, I'm gonna read the question carefully and I'm just gonna highlight this. Uh, any free consecutive even numbers. So I'll start with our standard even number, which is 2n. And then uh, the next one along, because it has to be uh, consecutive, so it has to be the next one along, um, I'll do 2n plus 2, because it has to be even as well. And obviously if I added on 1, then it would be odd. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I could do 2n plus 4, but I'm going to do 2n minus 2. And those are going to be my three consecutive numbers. The difference between the square of the largest number and the smallest number. Okay, so very similar to the last question. But this time it says the difference, which means I'm going to be subtracting. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll start with the bigger one first. And I'll subtract the smaller one. Like so. Now this is going to be a bit trickier. Um, again, I would want to do this just to make sure that I don't make any mistakes. Um, 4n squared, um, that is plus 4n, plus another 4n when we do this times this, and then plus 4. Okay, now whenever I've got a minus, I'm subtracting two terms. What I like to do is just put them in brackets and put the minus there, and then I'm going to sort of deal with the minus a bit later, essentially. Right, 2n minus 2, 2n minus 2, what's this going to give us? 4n squared minus 4n minus another 4n and then uh, plus 4. Okay, um, we can collect inside these brackets to get 8n in the middle uh, and we can collect inside these brackets as here to get minus 8n in the middle. And now doing this, what I can say is um, 4n squared minus 4n squared. Well, that cancels out, lovely. Next, 8n minus minus 8n is 8n plus 8n, which is 16n. And then finally, I could do the last one. And this way, the way I do it like this is it means that every time I'm including this minus sign, because so many people, just, uh, students, just forget it um, on, they remember it for the first term here, but then you forget to apply it to this term and to that term. Such a common mistake. Right, four minus four is just zero. Okay, great. So that's that done. Um, and then what, what have they asked me to compare it to? So back to the question now is always eight times the middle number. Okay, so well, what is the middle number? The middle number is going to be um, eight times two n. So I could say this is equal to eight times two n. And I've proved it. What we've got is equal to eight times the middle number, which is two n. Um, yeah, I think we're done. I think that shows it, and I think that will get us full marks. But I think what I would do, just to make sure, is I'll just say 16n is 8 times the middle number 2n. I only do that because for A-level you do have to give a statement afterwards, but for GCSE, not so much. 
um, you can get away with just, just doing the algebra part. Okay, here we go. Um, again, these questions are very similar. Prove that when the sum of the squares of any two consecutive odd numbers. Wowza. Okay, so let's let's break that down. The sum of the squares, so sum means to add, so put an add sign there. The squares, so I'm going to be squaring something or other. Uh, two consecutive odd numbers. So this is where we do have to use the same letter N. And we do one after the other like so. Um, lovely. Okay, yeah, we'll do this. I could do 2n plus 1 and 2n minus 1. And that does keep the numbers a bit lower. But I'm going to do it like this because, well, why not? I've read it down now. Let's do it. Okay, so when that is divided by 8. <clears throat> so I'm going to need to divide that all by 8. Okay, so let's see what do we get. Multiply out the brackets. Um, I'm going to do this quickly. 4n squared plus a 2n and another 2n gives us 4n plus 1. Uh, 2n plus 3 squared is going to give me 2n times 2n, so 4n squared. A 2n times a 3 is a 6n, and then a 3 times a 2n is another 6n, so we get a 12n, and then 3 times 3 is 9. Feel free to check my working there, but I'm pretty sure I've just absolutely boshed that. Okay, we got 4n squared and a 4n squared, that makes 8n squared. We got a 4n and a 12n, that makes a 16n. And we've got a 1 and we've got a 9, that makes a 10. Okay, there we go. And we're dividing that through by 8. Perfect. Okay, so what we can do next is we can say that this is equal to, we can take out a factor of 8 from this, um, from the n squared, because 8n squared, so take out a factor of 8 there. We could take a factor 8 out of, of here. Um, and what I can do is I can also take out an 8 from 10. So we take one 8 out, and that will leave me with 2 left over, like that. Perfect. Okay, and then finally, to finish off, just draw a line down here to show the separation of the work. Um, when I divide through by n, I get n squared plus 2n plus 1, because that 8, sorry, when I divide through by 8, that 8 cancels with that 8. But I've still got to divide the 2 by 8, so I get plus 2 over 8. And then what I can say is that as n squared plus 2n plus 1 is an integer, it's a whole number, the remainder um, is equal to 2 because I've got 2 out of 8 left over so I have 2 remainder 8 left over. Perfect. Okay, next question. Prove that the algebra actually that differs between the squares of two consecutive odd numbers is always a multiple of 8. Okay, lovely. 2n plus 1 is my first odd number, and then my next odd number, I'm actually going to go backwards in the sequence and use 2n minus 1. Because ideally I want the larger number here subtracting the smaller number, and that's going to keep it positive, and it's just going to mean that I'm going to make less mistakes. You could use 2n plus 3, of course. Okay, let's multiply out. 4n squared plus, again, 2n and another 2n is 4n, and then 1 times 1 is 1. So I've just multiplied out that first bracket. I always do this double bracket technique here if I've got a subtraction in between. And what am I going to get when I do 2n minus 1, 2n minus 1? I'm going to get a 4n squared. I'm going to get a minus 2n and another minus 2n. So it makes a minus 4n, and I'm going to get a minus 1 times minus 1, which makes a plus 1. Okay, let's go. Always do this method because I don't want to make a mistake. 4n squared minus 4n squared. Cancellation. 
<laughs> Next. 4n minus 4n makes 8n. And then finally, we have 1 minus 1 is cancellation. So we get 8n. And 8n is equal to 8 multiplied by a number. So therefore, it is a multiple of 8. So therefore, a multiple of 8. Bosch. Okay, prove that for any free consecutive even numbers. Any free consecutive even numbers. Okay, this, so let's write those out. So let's start with 2n. And then the next one along will be 2n plus 2. And then the one prior to that will be 2n minus 2. And those are my free consecutive numbers. The sum of the squares of the smallest even number and the largest even number. Okay. So the sum of the squares of the smallest one and the largest one is going to look like that. Um, 4n squared, this is going to give me minus 4n and another minus 4n, so minus 8n. And it's going to give me a minus 2 times a minus 2, which is a plus 4. We're going to get 4n squared, we're going to get plus 8n, and we're going to get plus 4 when we multiply the second bracket. We simplify and we end up with 8n squared. The 8n's and the minus 8n there cancels and we get 4 and 4 is 8. Okay, so what we're going to do here uh, is 8 more than the, than oh, is 8 more than twice the square of the middle number. Okay, sorry. So 2n, um, we're going to square it and we're going to times it by 2. And that's going to give me twice the square of the middle number. So that's 2 times, and 2n all squared is 4n squared, which gives me 8n squared in total. Okay, perfect. And we can see here, we've labelled it out nice and clearly, we can see that 8n squared plus 8 is 8 more than 8n squared. So we've proved it, and that is proof in a nutshell. Hope you enjoyed that. Bye for now.